Good morning and welcome back to the workshop. My name's William and today we're going to be doing a bit more on the tender chassis for the H2 Atlantic. Now if I catch you up to where we were, we have a pair of tender beams which have been machined uh, almost completely and we have some little bits of mild steel angle. We have the tender frames, tender sides, sorry. So the tender sides slot into a little slot here, like so. And then the angles are used to, to kind of positively locate and reinforce that joint, like, you can't really see that well, but like so. Um, there is still a question as to whether I'll be riveting or brazing the angle to the tender beams. Uh, on this beam here, which is the, the, the front beam of the tender, um, there's there's no nothing else on here, so um, it's kind of immaterial, really. As long as I get that nice and smooth, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what's on the other side. On the other beam, uh, there are holes to screw in buffers, uh, and that obviously is a little bit more problematic um, to arrange rivets or to ensure that the brazing material doesn't clog up those threads because I didn't plan ahead and I've actually tapped them already. Um, I've been practicing riveting, so I've got a little example here. This is just me having a go with some 1 16th inch steel rivets, uh, and that seems to have gone quite well. So um, that, that still needs to be determined, but what we can determine is based on the outside dimensions of these two slots, we know how wide the chassis is going to be. So now we can machine the tender frame stretchers. This is just standard quarter inch mile steel. I've cut two of them off um, to just over three and a bit inches. They need to be about three and a quarter in total, but the exact measurement is gonna be determined by the inside faces of these frames here. That in there is my first ever broken tap. Hello up there. I really wanted to show you some more of the, uh, the tender chassis build, uh, but that tap breaking has really thrown me for one. I don't have any other 6BA taps. I've ordered some more, but like I said, it's gonna be a, be a week or so before they arrive. And I don't wanna have too many concurrent parts being worked on at the same time. So while there are other tasks to do, I think I'm just gonna sit on my hands wait for those taps to arrive, get that tapped and those parts completed before I move on to the next thing. Um, I'd like to show you the, uh, the bits of the workshop that I mentioned in the previous video. <clears throat> this is the uh, Fobco Star drill press I mentioned. Uh, this is just the, uh, the same drilling vice I've had for a little while. Um, it's, it's fairly heavy duty, it's not, it's not accurate or repeatable or anything, but it seems to do okay with this. Um, as you can see, it's not in terrible nick. Um, there are obviously cosmetic wear, sticker residue and things, um, but it's got all the original uh, markings on it and so on, which is, which is pretty good. Uh, one problem is uh, the spring is either not engaged or is reversed, so it actually wants to push down instead of resisting. That's one thing, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, and the other thing I'll demonstrate by turning it on. Not super loud, but not really quiet either. And if we uh, try and move this down, listen to this. Now. It's not doing it now. But you can just, there we go. There you go. So that's. To me, that sounds like, like warm bearings. I've put a uh, micrometer dial against the chuck and um, it's, it's got about a, a tenth hour run out, um, which I guess is 
is, is pretty bad. It should be you know, a couple of foul. Um, what is handy is if I've got a pilot hole, um, then I can drill fairly accurately into that. Uh, it, it is a couple of foul oversight that, you know, the, the nominal drill bit size results in a hole that's a couple of foul larger than that drill bit uh, in general. And that's what I'm getting from this. So um, once it gets started, although the, the bearings are worn, it does drill straight and it, uh, it doesn't, doesn't when it's in a hole, it doesn't, doesn't go crazy. The challenge of course is getting that hole drilled first. So what I've been doing is using the center punch and then a really tiny drill bit that's almost flexible, so it can definitely, whatever the uh, chuck is doing, the tip of the drill bit is definitely in the, the center punched hole and then go a bit deeper and then swap to a slightly larger bit and go deeper. And that's how I ended up drilling the uh, pilot holes for these 1 16th rivets was, was using this. Well, Father Christmas has uh, come and gone and uh, has brought along a uh, little brazing half. Um, which is uh, quite handy. I've got the mineral wool blanket and I've got, uh, I had already had one of these uh, the vermiculite blocks. So uh, this is gonna be my little brazing station, I think. Um, this is metal, uh, but it may need some kind of shielding underneath or maybe lower this down. I'll figure that out later. It's just held on with two screws. The rear of this has got screw holes. So I just screwed it into the uh, frame of the shed. That's pretty handy. And uh, these, this is the, uh, the brazing torch from uh, Sievert, and if I remember correctly, this is the one that it comes with by default. And then I asked uh, Mr. Factotum, which he recommended, and he recommended whatever this one is, 294B, uh, which is what he uses as a general purpose uh, brazing tip, uh, torch tip. Uh, and it's, it's a bit larger. I think it's gonna be a bit more diffuse heat. Um, but I got that too. And, uh, and a regulator, unfortunately, Unfortunately, much like the tap situation, I've uh, ordered a gas canister, but it hasn't arrived yet. So, so far, no brazing has taken place. And I also mentioned in the previous video that I wanted to do a little bit around model railways. That's kind of what brought me to the party, uh, figuratively speaking. Um, I built a P4 uh, turnout, uh, and that was, and a wagon, and that was pretty successful. Uh, but I kind of realized in retrospect, there's, there's probably just a bit too much in the way of um, maintenance, tweaking, that kind of thing for me personally for P4. So I have decided to go with EM gauge. Um, and um, that's that, I think that's a sensible choice for me because uh, Pico allow you to purchase EM gauge stuff off the, well, Pico provide it for the EM gauge society and you can just buy it off the shelf ready made. So I can pick and choose what I'm making uh, and, and how I'm making it and what I'm buying uh, and then uh, find an easy balance so that it doesn't drain all my leisure time, uh, but it still can be rewarding in the long run. So that's where we're at. I was, like I said, I was hoping to do some more machining, but I, I think um, I'm just gonna have a cup of tea and make some model railway stuff. So I will see you in the next video.